Hi there, this is Richard Walker from Lucidate. Welcome back to our exciting journey of understanding generative pre-trained transformers. If you recall in our previous episode, we built a GPT model from the ground up and trained it on the Wikitext 2 dataset. Our model performed remarkably well, given that we only used a standard PC and 24 hours of training time. Today, we're pushing the envelope even further. We'll explore the potent combination of using and fine-tuning a pre-trained model with domain-specific data. Our goal is to show how fine-tuning can significantly enhance a model's performance within a specific domain. In this particular case, the life sciences. We'll start by downloading an existing pre-trained model and a tokenizer from the Hugging Face library. Then we'll apply this model to auto-complete tasks for some life sciences prompts. Following that, we'll fine-tune this model using data from the PubMed corpus and rerun the same autocomplete example to highlight the performance boost attained via fine-tuning. So let's dive right in. First, let's take a look at the Python code that downloads the pre-trained model and tokenizer. In this code snippet, we're simply bringing in the necessary libraries and modules from PyTorch and Hugging Faces Transformers library. We can then fetch the pre-trained distill GPT-2 model and its corresponding tokenizer using the from pre-trained method. Distill GPT-2 is a smaller, faster variant of the GPT-2 model, and it's ideal for demonstration as it can be fine-tuned even on modest hardware. Numerous other models comparable to Distill GPT-2 are also available at Hugging Face. Swapping models is as easy as changing the model name in this code snippet. Trying out various pre-trained transformers from Hugging Face and comparing the results can be an enlightening exercise, one that I encourage you to do. To visualize the details and the architecture of each model, we can use code like this to print out key parameters. For instance, the Distill GPT-2 model has 82 million parameters and consists of six layers, including tokenization, positional encoding, and attention layers. Alternatively, it's perhaps easier to visualize this text output instead as a block diagram. Here we see the Distill GPT-2 model we start with a tokenization embedding with a vocabulary of 50,257 tokens, and each token is represented as a 768 element vector. This is followed by a positional encoding layer, which has the same encoding dimension as the tokenization layer, again, a 768 element vector. The size of this encoding layer imposes a maximum sequence length of 1,024 tokens. We then have a normalization layer on the embedding vector. So this has a size of 768. This is then followed by our attention head. Here we're looking at the attention of each token to every other token captured in our query, key, and value matrices. There are three matrices, each of size 768 by 768. This is followed by a feed-forward layer. In this architecture, the input and output layers are the same size as the embedding vector, and the single hidden layer is three times the sequence length. This pattern is then repeated through five further attention heads. Depicted like this, it's easy to see why transformers have so many parameters, and it also helps me to visualize what the attention heads are doing. Compare this to a CNN. In a convolutional neural network, useful for image processing, the feed-forward layer is fed by filters that look at the difference in intensity between adjacent pixels. Language isn't quite like that. Non-adjacent words might not attend to each other. The attention heads help the network figure out which words are relevant to one another based on the training corpus. Finally, we reach the softmax layer, at the output of our neural network. This outputs a token vector. During training, this vector is compared to the vector of the token we expect to see, 
and the differences are back propagated in a backward pass through the transformer to update all of the 82 million parameters. And during inference, the output vector is the predicted token of the transformer after a forward pass. Next, we define a generate text function. This function tokenizes the input prompt and uses the model to generate text. It also sets the attention mask and pad token ID correctly to prevent any unexpected behavior during text generation. We also have a list of life sciences related prompts for our autocomplete tasks. The code goes through each prompt, generates text using the generate text function and displays the results. The first thing to note is that this model generates coherent responses, significantly superior to our minimally trained transformer from the first video. Remember, we trained that transformer from scratch using an existing architecture and the wiki text corpus. While that was a valuable academic exercise, it's far more practical and beneficial to download one of the pre-trained models from Hugging Face. Our next step is to fine tune this model We'll start by downloading a specialist life sciences corpus, tokenize it and prepare it for fine tuning. Hugging Face provides a series of Python classes that make this process straightforward. If you're a Lucidate member at the managing director level, you'll have access to a detailed code walkthrough of this fine tuning process. Joining Lucidate's membership not only shows your appreciation for Lucidate's videos, but also grants you exclusive perks like early access to videos, members only content. It also contributes towards the production of future high quality AI videos. Click the join button below to explore more about the membership tiers and their perks. Remember, clicking join only takes you to the information page. It doesn't sign you up. Once we fine tune the model, let's revisit our original questions. The responses post fine tuning are better, but not drastically so compared to the pre fine tuned ones. Here are the original responses for comparison. You might want to pause the video or take a screenshot to compare them with the post fine tuning answers. You might be wondering whether the incremental improvement was worth the effort of fine tuning. To answer this question, let's consider a different scenario. Let's propose some more technical questions based on very recent life sciences research. Our original distilled GPT-2 model was trained with information up until 2021, clearly including some life sciences data. However, our fine-tuned model was trained with data up to 2023. Here we see a significant performance leap in our fine-tuned model over the generic one. Again, to study this in more detail and to compare the responses of the base model and the fine-tuned one, it might make sense to pause, rewind, and take a screenshot. Whatever works best for you. I hope the takeaway is clear here. For generic queries that don't require the most up-to-date information, base models work extremely well. But when dealing with more recent or advanced topics, the extra effort of fine tuning really does pay off. In the next video, we'll switch from life sciences back to capital markets. We'll look at the Bloomberg GPT model, a specialist GPT for financial services. We'll explore how the Bloomberg team used some results from Alphabet's DeepMind team to design the size and shape of their transformer. This is called Chinchilla Scaling, named after the Chinchilla Transformer developed by DeepMind. So stay tuned by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit like if you found this video helpful and please leave any questions or requests for future videos in the comment section. Thanks for watching.